have to sing about this before I forget. Now, change the chords. Terrible. Terrible! <laughs> Perfect chords. <laughs> okay. I know I've done these chords before, but what chords have I haven't done? What chords have I haven't done? That was hard to say. But I still said it anyway. still say it anyway, no matter how much people disagree, or how much of a problem they have with me, don't care, you don't reward me, and you don't punish me, only God does that, only God can do that, so stop kidding yourself, kiddo. parents wanted to do. Okay? And I don't know how much time I have left with them because they made a really bad decision last year. Okay? And I tried to warn them. But they just think that I'm crazy. Obsessed with conspiracies. So of course they didn't listen me. They listen to the world and the CDC and motherfucking Fauci. So trustworthy. But you know, there's nothing I can do about that. I had to let that one go. Because there are plenty of decisions that I've made they haven't agreed with either. Plenty of drugs I've taken that they don't understand either. So, anyway, I was watching Pretty Woman, and I was paying close attention to Julia Roberts and her pitch perfect face and I felt that FOMO that I've been told to feel that I've been sold to feel here in America ha 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 So 
sometimes I wish I was pretty. Sometimes I wish I was clean. Sometimes I wish my mouth wasn't full of vulgarity, obscenity, but alas, it won't pass. Because I still live in this fucking world, right? Why do you think I like cannabis, you guys? If, if the Grateful Dead bears weren't enough proof, okay? <laughs> I don't have latent inhibition. Which means I can't filter out negative, inconvenient information like you. What a luxury it must be. To not look at things that I don't want to see. And so they'd have you convinced that I see things that aren't there. All because I don't match my socks and I refuse to fix my teeth. I must be unaware. No, I just don't care about your rules. But I know that I'm supposed to. And I do feel bad because I look at everybody else around me obediently doing what they think they're supposed to do and I feel bad because I know that I don't have to but my libido we were talking about my libido or lack thereof right my libido is a phantom limb phantom libido right <laughs> so with a phantom limb what happens I need to talk about this on stage because I think it's really interesting I've always been obsessed with amputees I've been obsessed with amputees my entire life and I realized today when I was making a milkshake I realized because <laughs> this is the kind of shit that happens like revelations I need to write my own book right well I was making a milkshake and I was thinking, man, this makes so much sense now. Why I was always obsessed with that. Because, speaking of the FOMO, okay, FOMO and the phantom limb are connected. Because what happens when you, God forbid, um, have something severed, your brain will continue to send messages to that severed limb. And whenever your brain realizes that limb is not there, it will freak out. And so it's not just the physical pain that you're experiencing, it's psychological and psychogenic pain, which is way worse. Um, so I was thinking about that. In relation to sexual activity, in relation to romantic relationships, in relation to human connectivity. And I know that I'm supposed to want things that I don't want. I know that I'm supposed to do something with my uterus cause it has fine potential. Did I hold his hand? How often did I hold his hand and not want to hold it? How often did I go somewhere with a group of friends and I felt so disconnected from them? How often did I try to do what they told me to and I just wasn't feeling it, just wasn't buying it? How does this make you happy? How can you lie to yourself and tell yourself you're happy? Everybody on a social network is a miserable sack of shit. 
Everybody is an addict, and they're fine with it. Everybody. That does what they're told to. Goes along with the world cause they think they have to. They're not happy for this. They don't get rewarded for this. Really? That's what does it for you? But I was recalling all the times that I let somebody inside of me and I just wanted to die, die, die. So I couldn't help but disassociate. I couldn't help. I had to take myself away. Cause there's nothing more depressing to me than getting as close as one could possibly be to another human being and not feeling diddly squat for that person. And I know that I should, and I know that I did at some point. Yeah, I know that I could feel something, but I no longer feel anything. I, I just want to go off into the woods and die. I just want to go off into the woods, cause this will not subside. And that's why I make art. That's why I do comedy. That's why I work at a restaurant where I'm allowed to be what I'm supposed to be and not what the world wants me to be. Cause I feel like I... I'm at the point where I could really take this somewhere if I were just the slightest bit more motivated to be part of this world, but I'm just not because I don't have the FOMO. I have the FOMO for not having the FOMO. So it's not a fear of missing out. It's like acknowledgement. So I have, how do I say that? Amo. <laughs> Amo. I have the acknowledgement of missing out. And I'm fine with it. Right? But I feel bad for missing out because I know that other people want me to join them, but I don't want to. I just want to stay over here. But yes, back to the libido thing. So... The part of me that is female, okay, the part of me that's female that knows that I'm supposed to want companionship. I'm supposed to be codependent. I'm supposed to rely on a man to protect me and provide for me. And I'm supposed to support him and build him up and be a good wife and raise his children that is what women are supposed to do, okay? I know that. As an outsider, I know that. But I can't do that because that part of me that, that knows that that's what I'm supposed to do, it, it sends messages to my libido, and my libido's like, nope, nope, we don't want that. We do not exist. Okay, so for people that don't understand, like, just the whole, like, not being afraid of dying alone, not being afraid of, like, being that crazy cat lady. I mean, obviously, I embrace that. I meow all the time, and people meow back at me, so you're not really going to threaten me with that one. First of all, everybody's going to die alone. Like everybody, everybody will die alone. Even if you find somebody that's your soulmate, they're the love of your life. Y'all are both still not going to die together. Okay. That's not going to happen. 
So just stop saying that because it's just not true. How many phrases get repeated in our society as threats and they're not even true, dude? You're alone anyway. Like, even if you do things with other people, it's like you're still alone. You're just not conscious of that. And I think that whenever people start to become conscious of that, that's what makes them depressed. But, like, that's just something that I've accepted my entire life. And I tried really, really hard to be in a romantic relationship. I tried so hard to have a boyfriend. If I can't have a boyfriend, what makes you think I can have a husband? I mean... It's just kind of obvious. Cluster A personality types and romance. They they can't mingle. They just can't. Like the the thought is still there in my head. Like it it's still there, but it's like when it comes to actions, when it comes to like having to actually do something about that it's nil no motivation you know I'm motivated to make my art I'm motivated to get down on my knees and pray and talk to God on a regular basis and be this like outsider dissident or whatever that questions reality and makes people really uncomfortable okay that's that's what motivates me but it's just so crazy to me to think about like so many people in this world that it's like all they want to do is like be with somebody and I feel like the reason why they, they want to be with somebody is so that they can distract themselves from the reality that I just mentioned about how we're all going to die alone. Like we are all alone and like no matter what, which is why you need to get right with God and you need, you need God to be your best friend. You need God to be your soulmate. So I know that probably sounds depressing to codependent sex is shit, but you know, that scene in the Titanic with those old people, you know what I'm talking about? That old couple, they're like cuddling. They're spooning. They're spooning while they drown. <laughs> you know that scene I'm talking about? I guarantee you they did not die together, okay? She probably drowned before he did. I'm just saying, it's a stupid thing that people keep recycling because they want you to feel bad for being happily alone or for not wanting what you're told by society to want. Now, for tribalistic reasons and for biological and sociological reasons, I totally understand why people would encourage, you know, marriage and procreation and all that. And I think that those things are beautiful if they're fully understood. But most people do not fully understand either marriage or procreation. So people that don't understand that should not be allowed to do either of those things. They should be barred from those activities. So if you're not willing to die for the person that you're with, if you're not willing to stick it out with that person, you shouldn't be getting married, period. If you don't really believe in the tenets of marriage, you should not get married. They want to whine about gays, but it's, it's like, it's straight people that ruin marriage. It's straight people to get divorced like five fucking times and have open marriages and sex parties and all kinds of shit. I mean, you can blame that on gays. I'm not saying gays don't fuck a lot. Marriage ain't their thing anyway. So it, that doesn't make sense when there's such a, a measly amount of gay couples that actually get married. But procreation is like such a big thing, man. <laughs> like that's a big deal. Like you're bringing a child into the world. So you probably ought to think more about like the person that you're allowing inside of you. Do I want 
another version of this person, a teeny tiny version of this person growing and developing inside of me as a result of this sexual activity. I don't think that most people are conscious of this. I was always conscious of that when I had sexual intercourse, which is why I felt guilty about it. And it's why I disassociated because not only did I feel guilty, but I didn't even want to do that. And no, I was not raped. Nobody ever raped me. I just did it because I felt like I had to do it. You know, that's what I was supposed to do. Like when you're in a relationship and you're committed to that person, like that's one of the things that you do, right? Well, it's like I have to live with the fact that I've done that with multiple people that I'm not with anymore and I have no idea what they're doing in their life. And they have no idea what I'm doing with my life. And that's not just because, you know, I refuse to social network. It's because, you know, we're on completely different paths now. But for such and such a time, we were on that path together. And we assumed back then that we were going to stay on that path. And I really wanted to believe that about them. But the longer I was in that relationship, it was like, I just wanted to pull out all my hair, you know? And it, it's not because of him. It was 100% because of me, okay? I will never blame anybody else. It's always my fault. Anyway, and that's not me being self-deprecating. That's me being self-aware because I know that I'm hard to take and I know that I'm, like, almost impossible to be in a relationship with because I just want to spend way too much time by myself and it's almost excruciating to have to be around somebody when I want to be alone so I get very very aggravated when people are like well, I don't understand why you don't have a boyfriend because you're really talented and you're 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 really cool. And blah, 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 blah. They have that um, what's it called? I don't remember the name of it, but it's like a an intellectual attraction to me. <laughs> That's what non-pretty women have to offer, okay? Because most pretty women, it's like I hate to break this to you. Nobody cares about any of your talents or your intellectual abilities. All they care about is your face and your ass and your tits, okay? Like, I, I want to be more than that. And I see the futility of vanity. I see the futility of people chasing after attraction and lust and all that. It's just so silly. It really is. It's so silly. But... You know, I accepted a long time ago that I, I'm just, you know, not pretty. And it's opened the doors for me. It allowed me to be a lot of other things. You know, most women, that's all they have. It's just, and it, it's like, and I know really, really beautiful women. And I can tell that it gets to them that, that people look at them like that. But it's just the way it is. That's the way this world is. This world is totally materialistic and vain. And so if they're looking at a pretty woman like Julia Roberts, okay, they're just gonna see her for her like aesthetic qualities. They're not gonna care about who she is on the inside and all that, you know? And that's one of the biggest problems with, you know, these beauty standards and like, you know, just pushing all these beauty products on women. I mean, women are already so miserable and insecure and they can't wait to, you know, find something else to worthlessly obsess about that they think is going to fix everything. And it's just not. God will fix you. Okay. And by fix, I mean, he'll make it okay that you're broken. But that's the thing. Women, they don't want to hear that. They, they want to hear that they're perfect. They want to hear that, that they're good enough and all that shit. No. No, you're not. You'll never be good enough until you can accept the fact that you're not good enough. And then you will seek actual help from somebody, i.e. God 
somebody with a capital S, somebody, all caps, who can legitimately help you. Who will mend you when you're falling apart. I don't have meltdowns anymore. I call them melt ups because I know where my salvation comes from. So it's fine that I'm broken. It's fine that I'm schizophrenic. It's fine that I cry all the time because if I'm down on my knees already, might as well see God, right? I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And it, I am so blessed to be able to see that. I'm so blessed to have that understanding of how valuable that is. And that anything that I struggle with, anything that's really, really difficult, I can always use in order to connect with the Father even more. I can always use that as a potential opportunity to seek Him. And I just really pity people that don't realize that, you know? And they wonder why their antidepressants aren't working and, you know, why they're still so twisted. Well, it's because you trust Satan, honey.